Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. I have been getting a lot of questions concerning field modifications, what to put on which tank, uh, what is worth it and what is not, and now today's video will be about the field modifications for heavy tanks. Enjoy! In our first group we have the so-called assault heavy tanks, which are the PZ-7, the Mouse, the EVA-100, the Type 5 Heavy, the ST-2, the IS-4 and the Object 705A. Now, let's check what kind of field modifications I would recommend to you. I think most of these tanks have the same kind of playstyle, uh, so it's going to be very, very similar um, to give you an idea how to play them now. The all-terrain suspension is a very, very, very good choice on every single heavy tank there is in the game, simply because it reduces the, amount, the impact that the bad terrain is going to have um, on your tank while crossing, uh, for example, like soft terrain, uh, which is basically reducing your speed. Now, this is a great way to maintain speed, so always go for the left one here. Um, now, you also should always go for the aiming circle size on every single tank that is possible, simply because uh, even though your aiming, t aiming time is getting a little bit longer, but you'll also be more accurate in the end, so it counteracts the effect of the increased aiming time now. You will also have a choice to go for the minor stun duration. I would recommend that with the super heavy tanks. I think it's. Uh, I think the view range for these tanks is not very, not very needed. You'll be close up most of the time anyway, and uh, the stun duration uh, reduction is very very good against RTs as these tanks are being targeted a lot by enemy artillery. Now for the seventh slot. Um, HE shell ramming damage minus 15, minus 8% top forward speed. Minus 5 top, top forward speed. Hmm. That top forward speed is so little, but you're also getting uh, extra damage from HE shells and, and, and all that. To be honest with you, I would not take any of them here. If I'm maybe playing a really like a like a mouse and I'm playing like a type 5 or something that I really want armored against HE and like really want to negate the RT effect then I would take the left one but to be honest if I if I would be you I would I would not take any of them here now the tier 8 uh, modification here plus 30% internal module durability and plus 5% repair speed now that is really really good I think you would want to go for, for this one with these heavy tanks simply because it's going to be harder for the enemy to knock out your internal modules and also your repair speed is going to get 5% better so I would take this now, for this one, the, the dual category, most of the time you could take mobility and add turbo. Now, these tanks benefit a lot from turbo, because, especially the one turbo, because you get, uh, you get uh, 6, per, six uh, plus uh, top kilometers per hour top speed, which is really, really good and beneficial. Next up on the list, we've got the breakthrough heavy tanks, which are the IS-7, the Object 277, the VZ-5A, the 113 and the 60TP. Now these tanks once again have a similar playstyle. The 60 TP is more of a super heavy than a, than a versatile like a, like fast heavy than the IS-7277 5A and the 13 R. So let's look at these once again. Once again, you will want to go for the ter all terrain suspension here for the for the plus seven percent uh, terrain resistance. Uh, once again, you want to go for the aiming circle size. So left, left um, here. If you are running HP on these tanks, you will lose your view range uh, and you're gonna have 4, 5, 1 view range with food and both view range skills, so I don't recommend taking any of these actually. Um, if you want to get some extra view range, if you don't have the, the skills like on your commander and loader for the, for the view range skills, you can go for the right one here to get a little bit of extra view range at the cost of stun duration. Um, that's not too bad actually. Now here you will want to Definitely go for the plus four top forward speed. This is huge. Most of these tanks benefit a lot now. If you're going for DPGs and, and uh, you already have very good top speed with these tanks, uh, which you already do. Now, in that case, I would recommend going for this one because it's minus 4% top speed. Most of the time, you're not reaching the top speed of these tanks. But the plus 5% aiming speed is huge, as you can see here. 2.7 to 2.5 that is really really good so in most cases in 95% of the cases you want to go for the right one unless you're playing some kind of competitive game where you need top speed and you're gonna reach it and you are percent sure that uh, you will need this to get into a position use the left one but for randoms I would say use the right one here now for the eighth one 
plus 2% vehicle hit points. That is also really, really good if you want to be as tanky as possible. But once again, it reduces your dispersion on the gun while turning the, the hull and the, and the turret. So you might want to go for this one instead, actually, because it gives you minus 4% dispersion, uh, basically improving your gun even more at the cost of a little bit of HP, which you're getting from these kind of bonuses if you complete them until the end. Now, next up, we've got the versatile heavy tank group, which are the E5, the AMX M4, and the Super Conqueror. Now, most of these tanks have the same kind of playstyle, so I'm not going to break them down uh, because you're going to be using the same equipment. Let's go to the E5, field modifications. Now, once again, all-terrain suspension is very good, as I, as I mentioned. Once again, aiming circle size is huge. And now here, once again, if you don't have the view range skills, you can take the right one here. If you have both your range skills and you're running food and you're running HP, you don't need to take any of them. On the seventh one, uh, now you have plus two uh, reverse speed, which is really good in disengaging from certain fights. So I would definitely take that one actually, because as you can see, you only have 12 on the E5, which is very, very sluggish. But if you take this, it's going to be 14, which is a little bit faster and it's going to be a little bit better uh, when you try to disengage from a fight and you try to corner pick and return to your uh, starting position as fast as possible. Now, you have the tier 8 one here once again. Um, now, for the s uh if you're not running vert steps, it is very, very useful to take this one on the right side because it's going to be minus 4% on the gun. Now, for the E5, uh, I am not sure if I would take any of them, to be honest. If I want extra gun handling, I could take the right one. If you're running HP, uh, you could take the right one here once again on the AMX M4. I would not take any of them for sure. Now for mobility slot, it is very important for versatile heavy tanks that they can benefit from the effect of turbo. So if you have all of these researched, basically you select this one, you select mobility, you assign it, and now you can put basically a turbo onto the E5, which is going to get the secondary uh, benefits as you can see here, we have two equipment slots. One, you can use an HP booster. Second one, you can use a rammer. Sorry, the third one. And here, you can put the turbo. As you can see, the secondary uh, characteristics will apply in this case. So basically 10% engine power, plus five and plus three uh, speeds, top speeds. And this is very, very huge, especially for the s -Kong, but it can also work for the E5. If you really want to make it uh, versatile AF. Now, in our last group of heavy tanks, we've got the assault heavy tanks, which are the auto loading heavy tanks of tier 10. The 50B, the Kranwagen, the 57 heavy, and the Renault Chironte. Now, let's look at the field modifications for those tanks. Let's pick out the 57 heavy. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, on, the, on these tanks, once again, you'll want to go for the alter and suspension here, that's a no-brainer. Once again, for the aiming circle size, another no-brainer. Here, you don't want to take any of them, to be honest, because uh, view range doesn't really matter. Um, you only take the right one if you have no, if you don't have the view range skills, otherwise you don't take any of them. Um, on the seventh slot here, now, this is interesting. For the 57 Heavy, it's very, very crucial to disengage in time. So you will definitely want to go for the focus on mobility here because this couple with turbo makes it really, really fast and agile when you want to re uh, disengage after clipping out your enemy. And the plus three person reload time, as you can see, is only adding not even, not even a second there. So you can see that it's not even a second. So you definitely should go for the focus on mobility on the 57 heavy. Now for the 50B, you might want to consider going for the reload time or not going for any of them. Um, it is up to you. For the Renault Chironte, I would take the right one here, that's for sure. And for the Crown Wagon, once again, I think the reverse speed is very, very crucial when you try to disengage on those slopes after clipping somebody from a hold down position. Now, for the last one here, the tier 8 one, this is very, very interesting. You have heavyweight gun and lightweight gun. And left one gives you plus HP, but it also gives you minus 15% circle size after firing. This, this thing is huge with bad uh, stabilization tanks like the 57 Heavy, also with long aiming time. It is huge and the aiming speed is not going to matter as much because you're getting reduction here after the after the each shot fire, which is minus 15%. So this aiming speed is only going to be for the first shot, 
after the, after the second shot it will be much smaller the circle size so you definitely want to go for this one for the Renault Chironte uh, I don't recommend taking this one uh, maybe for the HP but uh, I would not take any of them to be honest on the Renault Chironte for the 50B um, I would definitely take the left one again and for the crown and the 57 heavy too so except unless you're playing the Renault Chironte always go for the left one now the mobility slot once again is very interesting here once again I'll uh, increase this to level 8 and just show you guys so the 57 heavy benefits a lot from extra mobility as you know it's very slow especially disengagement now let's click on the tank and let's equip it as I usually play it now you want to place HP on this you want to place turbo on this because if you have turbo on this and the HP you have 2.550 HP which is huge for an autoloader with this kind of DPM and you can see that the top speed is going to go up to 40.4 and the reverse speed is going to be 15 which is also really 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 healthy uh, now you probably want to take uh, bird stabs in this case you can also drop turbo once again depending on the map if you're playing Ansk you don't need turbo if you're playing Kimmelsdorf you don't need turbo if you're playing any kind of city map you don't need turbo but if you're playing those open maps where mobility is absolutely crucial to get into forward positions fast then you'll want to have this on trust me so once again guys thank you very much for watching the video if you haven't subscribed please do like the video and comment what you think about this kind of uh, field modification uh, advices that i gave you also if you reach 500 likes on this video i'll make the second part for medium tanks i'll detail it all out so thank you guys again for watching and i'll see you soon